the first thing uh, that we are going to do is to say, hey, what are the four things that we have to remember as a checklist for our exercises? Circulation, stretching, strengthening, and then neuro. A lot of the times, people forget about the neuro aspect. They are just focusing on doing exercise, doing weights, right? That's just muscles. And not enough of the stretching. The stretching is just, uh, and then I'm done. And then I start to uh, into my weight class. So the thing is that there's nothing really that links everything together to make it useful. And we are talking about very specific useful. We are talking about two things. What are the two things of why you're here? Fall preparation and chronic pains. At least half of you put a check mark on uh, to say, hey, my neck and shoulder have problems every now and then, or the lower back or the hip areas. So the thing is that that's a very real challenge. And the thing is that some of you basically uh, start uh, taking Tylenol or, uh, or whatever, Advil or whatever, very soon. And the thing is that I'm trying to get you away from there. So some of the success story is, uh, you know dentist? I know you all hate them, okay? <laughs> but the thing is that their occupation is hanging their arms up most of the day. So most of them have neck and shoulder issues. And so I have more than one dentist in my class. And the thing is that the dentist that has been seeing uh, a chiropractor for more than 24 years stopped seeing him after he took my class. I have had people that basically that uh, has been lingering with pains and stuff like that, like going to see the uh, physio from an ICBC claim, and then guess what? It never healed. And then she came to the class within two weeks. She said, the pain is gone, right? So it may or may not happen to you. What we are doing it here is not trying to teach you to become a doctor. That's not going to be possible. I mean, uh, you're talking about years of experiences. But I'm talking about the 2080 rule, where you spend 20% of the effort and cover 80% of the cases. So we are basically saying, hey, if that 20% effort can solve 80% of the case, for the special cases, go to see a doctor, go to see the physio, do whatever you need to do. Don't be stupid, <laughs> right? But the thing is that, just like cars, if all of us do the uh, regular oil change and shampoo your car, it solves half the problem. Right? Yes, water pump can go. There are other uh, complications. But the thing is that 28 rule is what we are after. Okay? So remember, when it doesn't solve your problem, if it's not trending positively, apply common sense. Go see a doctor. And it is very, very important to heal it properly. Because the first time you had a fall or injury, you start off with 100%. And then because you didn't heal properly, you only get 80%. And then the next fall will be 80% of the 80. So that becomes 64%. And so the thing is that every time it happens, your uh, well-being is being jeopardized. And what is even worse is not the pain. It's the fact that it affects your confidence level and therefore actually the quality of life. So the, some of you have grandkids. And then if you start having problems to say, hey, I cannot lift you because uh, my back is a problem and I'm not sure whether I can still stay upright if I lift you up. So it's very important that you maximize your ability so that you can enjoy the things that you like to uh, enjoy. If you like dancing, at least you feel, hey, I'm not going to fall down anytime. You don't tell your partner, hold me up because I may fall anytime, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay? So, stretching. Something to understand about stretching is that a lot of times 
we imitate stretching. I'm using a towel to simulate it, okay? It, when you get your kids to basically say, hey, dry the towel, they'll just do this. And it is, it's not doing the work. Why? Because you did not localize it. So you have to know what you are trying to accomplish, okay? And so the intelligent way is what? One, and then methodically go through the whole towel. Isn't this how you do it? Exactly. And the thing is that we forget about that when we come to stretching our body. When you basically wring this, if you have a delicate blouse, would you wring it like this? It'll go to a funny shape, right? Because why? You're stretching it. So the twisting is actually a way of stretching, okay? Understand that? And handling it here is basically localizing it to a specific area, okay? So let's uh, start with the easiest. We're going to stretch our fingers and wrist, okay? So you say, okay, um, why is this so important? This happens to be your landing gear. If you fall, this has to have a little bit of flexibility. If you are stiff and you cannot bend at all, you're going to be in trouble. The wrist is going to crack, okay? Or you're going to badly sprain yourself. So I want you guys all, while sitting down is fine, I want elbow to finger tip flat. And I want you to pry, so do you see this area I'm pointing to? This is the knuckle area, okay? So exactly, this is the knuckle area, okay? I do not want anything from the elbow to the knuckle to bend. I'm going to press the fingers up. Do you see it? my fingers are up, but uh, basically my knuckle is down. Now, do you feel the pressure on your fingers? Okay? Everybody, try it. Yeah. So, this has to be flat, because why? We're trying to localize it. If it's like this, do you see, is it working? No, it, it cannot work, right? So this has to be flat all the way to the knuckles. And then you press your fingers up. Do you feel it? Yes. And you should. This is managed pain. So recognize that those are good pains. There are pains that you want to avoid, okay? The pains that you want to avoid is a shooting pain. That is usually it basically uh, the, uh, the joint or something like that stimulate a nerve or pinch a nerve. So if you do this like this, you feel that, hey, this is a stretchy type of feel. So everybody look over here, don't move. What he is stretching, he thinks he's stretching the fingers, but it is actually the wrist. So it has to go from knuckle to elbow flat. And now do you feel it on your fingers? So strong wrist, but relaxed fingers. Now do you feel it? Now this is just a single angle. Do you realize that when you fall, your hand can be this, can be this, can be this. It is not practical to do a pose and think that you basically got things covered. So watch, I put it like this as the initial pose. And then I press harder on the little finger, my pinky side, and then I basically press harder on the index finger side. Now I'm changing the angles. Right? Do you see this? Do you see me rocking back and forth here? Do that. So slow. So for everything, do not just uh, do it fast. Exactly. Do it slow. Make sure that this is flat all the way to the elbow. Yes. And then you press this up. You emphasize on the pinky. You emphasize on the index finger. Do you feel the stretch? Right? So that is just the fingers. Shake it out. <laughs> and now, flat, all the way to the wrist. And now you're going to press at the palm. Okay? So you're going to press your hand, pop. So, 
slowly press your wrist up, relax the wrist. Exactly. Now this is up. You understand? Do you feel it? Mm. Yeah, yes. exactly. So, yeah, that's good. And then again, we do the index finger and the pinky side. So that is a small rotation, right? And when you feel that you cannot actually do it upright, it means that you have certain limitations and you have to stretch it, uh -huh. right? So the goal eventually, I did not say overnight, that requires a surgeon. <laughs> do it slowly. But I bet you that if you keep doing it for a month, two months, you start seeing the improvement. Ask Dave. When he first started, he was tight. <laughs> right? Exactly. But now he can basically stretch these a lot uh, better. You see, uh, basically see. Stretch about that far. That when he started. And then right. you rotate. And then you rotate okay. Right? And then you work on the, wait, see? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So press on the palm and get it upright mm -hmm. as much as is possible and then rotate. Do you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know that you lack that flexibility uh -huh. until you. Yeah, I lack <laughs> flexibility. I'll tell you. <laughs> exactly, right? And especially for someone that has injuries before, like uh, you start to basically feel that these stretches actually brings out some of the old issues. And the thing is, that's where you basically try to cover the rest of the twenty percent. Because what happened is that the body is just like the teenagers, right? If we remember how we were when we were teenagers, <laughs> right? When the parents say, hey, this is the watermark, right? Guess what? We try to see if we can go there, right? And if the parents adjust it for us, we say, hey, this worked. And then you are, and the thing is that that's how we get, go downhill. Because we adjust the bar because the teenager says so, <laughs> right? The body is basically saying, hey, like, uh, I don't think uh, you should be doing that. But the body doesn't really have that intelligence, right? So the thing is that the body is just acting like a teenager, okay? So you have to constantly basically make demands so that it goes into a slightly, remember the word slightly, slightly uncomfortable position so that it says, hey, I think they really want it here. And then that deterioration, we are all faced with the same curve. What we're trying to do is to change that curve like this. And in some odd cases, because you never exercised before, you actually gain. The curve is up. So depending on your starting point, okay, some is already active. So what we are trying to do is to make sure that if you are active, you're channeling the effort into something specific, which is for preparation, chronic pain. That's why we say the exercise you're learning and we're discussing today is very focused. I do not stretch, uh, teach you how to do splits or anything like that because do you need it? I don't think so, <laughs> right? Neither is it going to happen, right? That's beside the point. So this is your landing gear, okay? We'll uh, talk about how we're going to use it. If you hold a crystal glass on one hand and a plastic glass on the other, which one will crack when I drop it? It's too obvious, right? But guess what? We don't apply that same common sense to our body. You have to have give in your body. Because if it is rigid like a crystal glass, you're going to be in trouble it's going to crack, okay? So you are not going to take any direct impact. You're learning how to be flexible and absorb it. So we'll go into that uh, when we get into the functional part. So next, we're going to stretch our shoulders, 
Okay, common problem, shoulder and neck. So I want everyone to squeeze the shoulder blade so that your chest pops out and then put it forward. So exactly, so you see I'm rounding my shoulders forward and out, pop your chest, exactly. Go to the max and bring it forward. So when you bring it forward, I want you to actually round your back. Yes, exactly. You see, you can do it, right? And now squeeze the shoulder blade together. Pop your chest out. Squeeze even more. <laughs> right? Do you feel it? Yeah. Okay? So that itself, you start to feel the stretch. Right? Now, stop uh, for a sec. We're going to uh, do something different, and then we're going to pair the two th things together. Year on shoulder means that I'm, if I'm facing the door, I'm going to tilt, my nose is still facing the door. So this is what I call year on shoulder, okay? And now I go upright and then I turn chin on shoulder and then chin on chest. So there's three head positions or neck positions, uh, depending on how you look at things, right? So the thing is that what I want is that I want you guys to do this squeezing motion while you're doing the uh, ear on shoulder. Do, so do the ear on shoulder, go to the max. Yes, you. <laughs> ear on shoulder, yeah. And now squeeze your shoulder blade together at the back, yes. Do you feel it? <laughs> exactly, nope, don't, don't raise it. Remember stretching means what? You're making things longer. This is shortening this muscle. So make sure that your shoulder is as low as you can while you squeeze it backward. So do not lift your shoulder, okay? So squeeze, yes, exactly. Keep uh, the neck in that same position, just move it. Yep, neck in position, and then squeeze the shoulder blade, and don't lift the shoulder, there, exactly, down the shoulder. <laughs> So you see, we have a lot of little things that we do without even realizing it, right? Some of those extras actually take away from that exercise. So squeeze the shoulder blade. So everybody, it's comfy to have air conditioning here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but do not lean back. We are exercising here, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so. Sit upright, don't lean on the back, uh, squeeze the shoulder blade and forward while your head is tilted. Don't turn your head. So you are not turning, you are leaning so that, exactly, yes. And now squeeze and forward, forward, yeah. Bring it forward, more forward, yeah, more forward and squeeze the back, exactly. Now do you feel that? Do you feel this stretch, right? And do you feel that, right? Yeah, don't lift it, don't do this, exactly. Squeeze, right, okay. Your head is only upright, I need it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, so, ear to shoulder, right, and squeeze, all the way back, do you feel it? And forward, forward, and now forward, curl it forward, yes, exactly and squeeze it backward. Do you feel that difference? Okay, so now, next thing is chin over shoulder. So turn your head, no, nope, upright. Turn your head over here as best as you can. Now squeeze the shoulder, yep, stay there. Squeeze the shoulder. Do not use the arm. So, can you come up? Look, everybody, I'm just getting her to feel my shoulder, okay? Do you feel the difference between this? Did my shoulder move a lot? Now, do you feel the difference between this? So this one I originated from the shoulder. This one, this is just a passive. My hand is moving the shoulder. Do not use the hand to move the shoulder. That becomes a consequential. So you really use the chest muscle as exactly, and as well as, well as the the scapula, the shoulder blade, right? Use the shoulder blade muscles. 
And what is this important for? Stretching these areas. But it is more than that. As we age, how many of you can basically see somebody who is aged to a certain extent start sticking their neck out and start leaning forward? And that has to be corrected as early as you can. Because what happens is that joints tend to calcify if you don't do anything about it. So what happens is that to change that, you basically bring your chin to your spine. And then you squeeze the shoulder blade, and now your whole spine straightened out. So when you basically walk, think first, this is a problem. It has to be upright, chin to the spine, open up your chest by using the, what, the shoulder blade muscles. Posture affects so much of our lower back and neck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we often have shoulder and back problems. It's one of the most frequent things. So now, we did this position. Now, chin to chest. So one side of the chest. So one side of the chest, yeah. So keep the head in that position, yeah. And then now move the shoulder blade, just like before. So squeeze, exactly, all the way. And exactly, much better. And forward, and squeeze. Do you feel that? Mm. Right? <laughs> the thing is that these things works. And then I have some extreme cases where you have to do more. But from a 2080 rule perspective, okay, this is good enough for most people if you consistently do it, okay? So if you go into the class, uh, we'll uh, go into the really uh, like special cases, okay? So this is uh, there. But sometimes you have pain, right? Sometimes it's on the shoulder, sometimes it's on the neck. Right now we are talking about the neck. So sometimes we need to massage. The massage, if you basically go to a therapist, I'm not saying never go to a massage therapist. <laughs> they will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that you try to do the regular maintenance yourself on the special cases, you go out because all too often the first thing we go to without trying some of these common sense things we uh, do it and then what happened is that you go there a few times and then you stop so it is always basically leaving 20 percent because time wise it is not possible money wise it is not possible to go there all the time those are limiting factors, right? So what you want to do is to put the effort in yourself, get them to fix what is too complicated for you. Make sense? Right? So now, how many think uh, that your body, the muscles is laid down like a diagram, side by side? Is it like that? No, it's layer on top of layers. You happen to sit in front, so. <laughs> if this is one muscle, this is another muscle, okay? If I basically grind it like this, do you feel it underneath? No. Exactly. You, you probably bruise this one first before you even have access to the lower level. And that's why the movements that we were introducing in here is important because when you move, the layers open. So we are going to add something on top of it. Everybody, try it with your own hand, okay? Have one hand being strong and you press on it. Do you see, this is very weak, isn't it? You don't have a jack. So now I want you to generate a hook. So a hook, exactly. So you are going to basically hook 
down by sinking your elbow down. Now, do you feel that you're pressing harder? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is how you press. Not doing something like this where you are hurting this finger and actually not delivering anything. So now, with the hook, see if you can find where it hurts most on your neck. Yeah, cross over. And if you can find it, you basically sink your elbow down, you tilt your head, and then go through the shoulder move function. Not the hand moving the shoulder, use the shoulder blade muscles. Yes, and move it. Do you feel it? Mm, I see. Right? And make sure that it is what? Perpendicular oh. on the touch point. Yes. Like here, not flat. Okay. Exactly. Now it's more pointy, and then now squeeze the shoulder blade. No, open up the chest by squeezing the shoulder blade. Yes. And then round it. Do you feel it? Mm. Right? Yeah. It feels that it goes a lot deeper, isn't it? That's how you basically massage yourself. So you do that uh, to here, yeah. And some of you have uh, limitations because of flexibility past injuries or whatever the reason that we get here. Buy one of those massage canes. Okay. With massage canes, which is almost like a hook. Anybody else seen that? It's almost like an S shape. So you hold the uh, cane, one end basically pressing on it as if it is your fingers, sink down on it, and then now move the shoulder blade and that will help you so that you don't have to <laughs> struggle to get there, right? But it is also good that you try it because then you see when your flexibility actually improve, right? You are massaging the long side. So if you press your finger here, I tilt my head this way. So this one, it stretches this muscle and then this will be a layer on top of it. You understand? So same token, if you lean that side, you press on here. You understand, right? Do you feel it? <laughs> it didn't take, uh, take me long to find it, right? Exactly, and then move the shoulder blade. When you move the shoulder blade, do you feel that it's actually your fingers, the pressure of the finger is slipping down into the lower layers? Yeah. This is personal experience, okay? The thing is that I have seen people like using traditional methods, and then they slap the hell out of the other person. <laughs> and then everything is red, and then they say, hey, the circulation is now good. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> if they slap you, you slap them back. <laughs> no, just, <laughs> just kidding, okay? The thing is that you would rather it to be purposeful and effective not without any risk of injuring yourself, okay? These things, because you are pressing on your body part, if you are doing it like this, right? Most people do it like this. Don't do that. Because you, do not, you are not a massage therapist, right? The movement, you are allowed to move. Anybody told you not to move? No. You are allowed to move. So pressing and then moving is a better way than basically doing this. You cannot manage how strong the massage has to be. And the thing is that it is not how strong. If it is layered, you are not going to effectively get down there. You have to move to get down to the lower layers. And usually what happens is that the lower layers are the thing that is causing us problems. And that's why it relieves it, but it never heals up. You keep going back, right? So remember that basically the pain a lot of times is because something is stuck. It's stuck because sometimes the muscle is ten, uh, tense up and it never let go, right? And sometimes it's because of injuries. Scar tissues are formed. Right? Just imagine if I have two scotch tape uh, ta uh, together. Do I rub it like this and hope that uh, it will come apart? No. It has to be movement. 
And that is why this massage, this way of massaging is safe, as well as it addresses the issue of scar tissues. Okay? And then if it doesn't work, go to see your therapist. Right? And if it feels good, it doesn't have to, uh, if it feels good, go. Right? Ultimately, you worked uh, how many years? <laughs> right? You earned that right <laughs> to uh, enjoy a massage if you, where you need to. But the thing is that it just goes down to the purpose. It has to work for the purpose that you specify. So that is the stretching of the, uh, right? So everybody, remember, free head positions, what are they? Ear on shoulder, everybody say it out. Ear on shoulder, chin on shoulder, chin on chest while what? Moving the shoulder blade. The moving of the shoulder blade gets this spine long as well as basically keep this shoulder blade strong. If you hunch forward like this, it is because these muscles are weak. So you start squeezing it every day and then it will start to make a difference. I have one dentist Okay, that when he first came to my class, he was actually walking like this. And now he's upright. And then telling everybody like how the exercise makes such a huge difference to them, to him. Okay, so I want the same for you. Okay, work it. So this is, uh, this is the shoulder. Now let's work the uh, legs, okay? The legs, at the back of the leg is the hamstrings, right? And some of you did not move because you didn't notice the change. What I am doing is that I'm sitting on the front part of the chair so that my leg can be straight. If you basically sit back like this, do you see this is bent? I cannot stretch the hamstring with knee bend, okay? So for most people, you'll find that one, heels down. And then you see some of the toes are basically pointed to wherever. That is not good. So tighten it so that it points directly to the ceiling. Do you start to feel it already? And now, don't move. Some of you are sitting with the back rounded. So, <laughs> I want you to sit tall. Do you start to feel the stretch? We don't even have to go down, but we will. <laughs> so what we are going to do, listen to the instruction. Don't go down, this is going down. I have not actually felt anything by moving it that far. I want you to sit tall and then think of chin to chest forward. So think of yanking your body forward while your toe is still pointing to the ceiling. Do you feel that? Do you Calf and hamstring is all basically one chain when you're, if your leg is straight. Okay, so keep the leg straight and now sit tall and now chin to chest forward. Don't round here, yep. Look out, look forward. Now, do you start to feel it? Mm, still not, not, not here. It feels tight, but I, yep. I feel that all That is my a legs. stretch. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. And then, anybody can manage their tailbone. So watch me, the lower back. If you cannot see, uh, right. So this is what the peacock, right? <laughs> this is rounding the back. So I want you to be a peacock, so that you basically stick your butt back. Now, do you feel that stretch? <laughs> right? It goes all the way. <laughs> do you feel it? So the lower back position is very important. The straight knee position is very important. Go into that position. Okay? You think this is the max. Don't uh, move. Everybody watch over here. Do you, do you guys see this? 
a lot of the mistakes you actually do not notice it yourself except for somebody uh, spotting it for you. So if this goes up, do you feel it more, the whole chain? And now, arch this, look forward more. Do you feel it more? Mm -hmm. It's the tiny little details. I can basically imitate a stretch, but actually it's nothing. I don't feel it at all. Right? So it's not how low you get, it's just how correct it is. Okay? Anybody have problems? No? You understand the general? So this is what I call the pose. When we basically work the neck, this is what I call the pose. Okay? There's three poses in there, but there is movement. And I coined a name for it. Because we are of the generation where in gymnastic competition, a perfect 10 is a big deal. <laughs> right? Now they are talking about 32.5. <laughs> I don't even know, don't know how to interpret it. The thing is that the full score at, that, um, at our generation is 10. So remember 10, the digit one is the pose. The zero is the movement. One, this is the pose, and then exactly. So you all just have to remember, I have one pose, and I, this is the movement that I add onto it. I have three poses, but actually I classify as one because it's easier. So there's three sub posts in here, but this is the movement. You understand? The movement is the zero. Okay? So when I say, what do you have to uh, do in the stretching? You have to make sure that you have movement. And you lock to the point, and so you have to feel it. So everybody watch. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> that is not going to do anything. So when you say, I have exercised, yeah? <laughs> it is very important to understand. So what we are talking about is mindful exercises. There's a second word for it, purposeful. It has to be for a purpose, okay? You understand why you're doing it, okay? If I do this, it's not going to, <laughs> exactly. Make me Pinocchio, right? <laughs> so, that is uh, the, uh, the hamstrings, okay? So again, this is the pose. The key points is the tailbone, the chest out, and the uh, toes pointing, right? And so now, where's the zero? Where's the movement? Look, I anchor my uh, tailbone, pretend this is the tailbone, okay? I'm going to wipe my body side to side. I, this, uh, I call this the wipe. So do you see me wiping to one side? And then wiping to the other side. Do you feel it? Don't lean back. Again, don't move. Do you see this hunch? He is hunching his chest. Now pop your chest out. <laughs> and then wipe it across. Nope, don't use the shoulders. Use your chest. Now do you feel that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the head turning. You did not move your body. Yeah. <laughs> so, everybody watch. This is a very common error. So, to wipe. <laughs> this is just the head movement. I want basically you to actually not just move the chest, I want you to think of the chest and belly button to wipe across. Now, do you feel, uh, feel that uh, stretch if you think of the belly button as well? So wipe it all the way. Do you feel it? Underneath. Underneath the leg. So keep the leg straight. We are still, exactly, we are still doing the hamstring. It's just that the movement changes the angles. You are leaning back. So sit tall. Exactly. Do you feel the stretch? Right? And then now you turn your chest. Nope, that's your head. Turn your chest. Yes. Do you feel it? Right? It changes the angle. 
And do you feel the difference, right? Yeah. So you eventually try to move from here. Exactly. Do you feel the difference, right? Now, this is from the shoulder. Get it from the ribs. Now, do you feel the difference? Uh, my shoulders are tight Relax it. Okay. So relax the shoulders. Turn it from here. Yes. And then turn it from here. Relax the shoulders. Yes. Right? Yep. Okay. Now don't let the toe point to the side. So keep the toe pointing to the ceiling. Yes. Now do you feel does yeah. it feel different? Right? Yeah. So make sure your toe doesn't move. Make sure that when you wipe, your toe doesn't move. We have one case here where the toe actually move together with the yeah, toe pointing up to the ceiling and wipe. Do you feel it? So then wipe the other side. Yeah? <laughs> That's just your head. <laughs> wipe it with your whole body. Now turn your body. Oh. Yes. Do you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that when you turn, everybody watch over here, okay? When you turn to the side, straight leg, yeah, to the side, there is more pressure on the side. Mm -hmm. yes. And how many of you have experienced that if you do a long hike, there's tightness here? This is the stretch to solve that, okay? So. Now, one more. This is the movement. So the, the wiping, twisting is like this. So chest over the straight leg, look at my body. I'm twisting my body without turning my toe to look at my uh, the backside. Nope, across your leg. So that side is across your leg. Yep, so toes up and then turn your body, yes. <laughs> Do you feel it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and stay there. You don't have to go both sides. Oh go across your leg, exactly, go side. across your leg, yes. Okay. Because what I find is that the open side is not too productive not and I might as well save the time. I'm not ready yet. Yeah, so <laughs> relax. I, I like yep. to follow. Yep, you know, yep, straight. one step at a time, oh. yeah, to whole body twist. Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's slightly more on the outside, right? Twist really from the ribs. Now, do you feel it? Mm -hmm. Right? So the next stretch is the inner groins. Okay? Every one of us, to some extent, every now and then, we have uh, done the gardening, right? There is their hose. And one of the things that pisses you off about your hose is that it folds and then the water doesn't come out, right? Or if you step on it, it doesn't come out. The thing is that if you look at the uh, body diagram, all the blood vessels go through the inner side. And guess what? Some of us, because all the years that we are alive, we were taught, be a good boy. <laughs> Be a good girl, right? This is, what are you doing, right? <laughs> exactly. So this is important to open this up, okay? Yes, open as wide as you can. Once it is opened, I want you to fit your whole body with a straight back down. So think of your belly button being fitted down. So watch, the wrong way. This is not it, right? I'm basically putting my head in here. It's the belly button. So put your belly button down flat. So this is the pose. And now place your elbow on your knee like this. On the, yeah, from the inside, yeah. And so now preventing the, uh, the knee from caving in, you turn your chest so that basically you look to one side, so you turn your whole body. That's your head turning. <laughs> You're turning your whole 
does it feel different? Right? Turn here and press out. Do you feel it? Yeah? Do you feel it? Yeah. You turn the other way. Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, so use both elbows to keep the knee in place and then straighten out your back. Exactly. And turn your whole ribs and everything to the side. Do you feel it? Right? And then you turn the other way. This one I feel it. Do you feel it? Yeah. Right? So this opens up your groin area. Try to flatten the back a little bit more. So you're hunching in a little bit, okay? So flat back. So pop your chest out to the floor. And that will pop your belly button lower. Yes, do you feel the difference? Back is flat already? Not, no, not too, if better, okay. not quite, exactly. Okay. So again, over time, you'll be able to flatten this more. Okay. Right now, yes, it is almost, but not quite, okay? And then you turn your uh, chest and body to one side. Do you feel the stretch on the other side? Did I turn my whole body? Yep, yep uh, if you can. So turn all these. Do you feel it? OK, yeah. And then turn the other way. Turn the other way. Do you feel it? You feel it? Yep. Do you feel the stretch? Strong tummy, and then you'll feel it right here. So the strong tummy is what? The locking. If you, for example, if I let my whole body loose, and you see everything is, is absorbing the twist. So you have to lock here, you have to lock here, so that this turn opens up the groin area. Now the next thing, addresses the lower back. The lower back have the hip in between, right? So the problem with uh, having the hip in between is that if I have a low back pain, how many of you start to do this? <laughs> we all done that, right? <laughs> the thing is that If this is the muscle, <laughs> what is it going to do? Not much, right? So what you have to do is to basically anchor this side, stretch here, anchor this side, stretch here, right? So this is what we're going to do. So. We're going to do the simple version first. So this chair, I'm sitting 12 o'clock. Now I turn to 9 o'clock. All the way 9 o'clock, that's 10 o'clock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I want half a butt to be out. And I'm going to put my elbow on my uh, knee. And then I'm going to slide backward until it goes as far back as possible, not on the tip. Everybody watch. Watch, watch, watch. This is the tip of my shoe. I do not want you to dangle your shoe like this. I want you to be on the ball of your foot, exactly. Okay? So now, you do the pelvic tilt, and then you bring yourself upright. Now do you start to feel the stretch here? So tight tummy. So that's the lock, right? So, so lock the hip so that when you come up, the hip comes with it. Now do you feel it? A little bit more, right around here, yes. Okay, so now press your heel backward without, nope, without shifting. So press your heel backward, yes. Now do you feel the stretching in here? in the quads. No? Do you feel it? In here? These muscles? It's okay. It's yeah. okay. I do that all the time. So. Yeah. But pelvic, add pelvic tilt to it. 
So some of you say, hey, I have always done it, okay? There is a good posture versus just an okay posture. Because uh, you have done it before, we'll go into the more extended version. So whether you are on chair or whatever, so I want, I want to ask you to basically uh, think of here as a stable point, okay? And then I am extending my heel backward and extending this forward without actually any shifting. So this is wrong. This is a shift. This is an extension back. So I'm extending it back and extending this forward and now locking my hip. And then you'll feel the stretch a lot more. Try it. So think of this extending forward. Nope, don't move to here. Lock here. And now extend this backward. Nope, not shifting. Just extend the heel. Exactly, yes. Do you feel the difference? Right? And use your abs, ab muscles. Exactly, lock it to almost leaning back, but the tailbone has to go with it. Try to lock it so that this is perpendicular to your front leg, the hip. Yes. And now extend your heel backward. Yes. Do you feel it? Right? Lock your abs. Exactly. Okay? Do you feel it? Right. I, I can feel it, but it's yep. does it look right? The thing oh, is that feeling, down. exactly, feeling it correct is the most important part. Okay. Okay, so you have to feel it around here. Okay. Exactly. Yep, yeah, that is good. Exactly, then that's good. Okay. okay? It is not the position. It is, uh, what? It is the feel. That's why we talk about mindful exercises and not just copying. So make sure that the ball of the foot is actually touching the ground. Exactly. Now it locks a lot better. Now, exactly. Now don't lean forward. Exactly. Now think of this extending forward. Just thought the process of extending this forward and the heel extending backward. Now do you feel that? Yeah. Right? Here. Exactly. Exactly. So you can see why the intent of how you stretch is the most important part. It's a perfect 10. You need to know the pose. Always try to figure out what the movement should be. So this is the pose. Once you are happy with that, okay? So what movement am I introducing? I'm crossing my front leg. And then you feel that basically the, the uh, stretch actually changes. And then what I'm going to do is stretch and now I'm going to lean out, draw a circle. And that is what the zero is about. Because otherwise you're training on just one freaking position. And we move, <laughs> right? The thing is that those movements is not, does not have a, it has to be perpendicular. So you have to introduce that element of movement into your stretches. So now we get into strengthening. So again, we will be doing exercises, okay? But uh, let's uh, do something. Some of you guys have an injury. For example, your shoulder is hurting. I cannot even raise my arm, right? So now, what do I do? So what you have to know and understand is that there is adaptation that we can do to the exercises, okay? So everybody stand up and then you do this pose and then you stay there. So one, most of you are pretty good, but where elbows are bent, you are cheating a little bit. And now, when it is here, so now when you have the flexibility, this is easy. But some of us do not have the flexibility. So this stretch is not going to do too much for you. Okay, so we'll be using the walls. Don't place your hand on the <laughs> white screen. I think they use it for the white screen, but you are going to do this. So you're going to place your hand high up. And if you have a shoulder injury, watch first. Uh, if you have a shoulder injury, Relax the shoulder, 
Use the other hand, good hand, put it up as high as you can. So this is a passive, uh, right? And then I anchor it here, and then I stay away from it, and then I push my butt back until I can form a straight line with my body. So the hand to tailbone should be a straight line, or even dip a little bit if you can. So this stretches out this whole area. And if you're into Chinese med medicine and stuff like that, all these things, uh, like uh, there's all kinds of meridians and stuff like that uh, that uh, we want to address. And so this is uh, what it is. So I wanted you to do uh, this, and then I'm going to get you to, so that is the pose. And I'm consistent, darn uh, consistent in everything. There is the zero that we have to all do. We are going to move the shoulder. This is the shoulder. Move the shoulder to one side and then move the shoulder to one side without the tailbone and the hand moving. So watch. So one, I'm going to push the shoulder out. Do you see it? I'm forming a V shape with my shoulder, right? And then I'm going to swing to the other side. And then I'm going to go back to, uh, uh, to the other side. And then I'm going to turn my head one way and then the other way. And then you feel basically there's some knots and uh, tension in, uh, that get addressed with this uh, twist. So the, do that, uh, find a space, find a spot. So the legs should not be too far away because then the, exactly, nope, here. So the, the legs should be going perpendicular to the ground. So you're pushing your butt back, exactly. Now do you feel the stretch? Mm -hmm. Sink a little bit more, extend, exactly. Now do you feel it, mm -hmm. right? And then now, don't move here. Now, you shift everything. No, not the butt. Mm -hmm. Shift just the shoulder to this one side. Do you feel the stretch? Yeah. And then you switch it to the other side. Don't move the butt. Exactly, exactly. And then move. You understand? Yeah. So, lock the hip, work here. And then lock the hip. No, nope. yeah, shift your weight exactly to the other side. Do you feel it? Okay, I'll come around. So, push your butt back so that your leg is perpendicular to the ground. Just now, you are leaning. Oh, okay. So right, right, exactly. So, push the butt back now. Exactly, yes. Do you start to feel the extension of your arm and yes. shoulders? Yes. And straighten out the elbows. Exactly, and now do you feel it? Okay? And then move just your shoulder to one side and then don't lock the hip, move it to the other side. Do you feel it? Yes, I do. So make sure that you lock the hip when you shift your shoulder to one side. Yes, so that it's a V-shape. So it peaks on the shoulder, right? And then lock the hip. Do you feel it? Here, yeah. In the, right? And now turn your head, left and right. Yes. Do you feel the stretch? Yes. <laughs> this shift can be improved. Okay. So the shift, do you feel this? Oh, yeah. Yes. And now turn your head. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then the other side. And then, nope, turn, uh, turn your head the other way. Oh, right. Do you feel it? Yeah. And then now fix the hip. Yeah. Peek out here. Go to the other side. Get this shoulder. Exactly. Yes. And now turn your head and then turn the... Oh. <laughs> it's a whole uh, deeper uh, stretch. Uh, uh, try it. I want the legs to be perpendicular to the ground, right? So now, push your butt back. Oh, okay, fairly, okay. Yeah, stay, uh, hand stay there. Now push your uh, butt back, back until this, the hand, nope, don't shift. Let it stay there, push this. Now do you feel the stretch underneath yeah. your arm? Yes. Right? Exactly, so sink even more if you can, yeah. And then now, don't move here, move here. Do you feel it? So. And then shift this to this so side. You know, moving your bump, right? Yeah. Like upper now shift, exactly. Now turn your head left and right. Do you feel it? Yeah. It's tight, it. yeah. right? I feel it more in my neck, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that just get the neck per, uh, parallel to the uh, arm. So you're looking slightly down. You don't have to uh, look up. Straight arm. 
Now, do you feel it? This yeah, opening. I'm sorry to feel it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then now, this shift. So, exactly. And stay there. Yeah. And then turn the head. Nope. Turn the head left. Turn your exactly, the and then the other way. Yeah. Do you feel that when you turn? Yeah, I can feel that. Here, feel exactly. Yeah. There are tensions that uh, shouldn't be there, right? Okay. And then the okay. other side. You need help? Yeah. Okay. So push your butt back. Exactly. No, no. Don't let this slide. Put it high, and then now, do you feel this stretch underneath armpit and stuff? And then you shift this shift your balance exactly so that the this shoulder peaks out exactly yes don't know the head still look down do you feel it okay and then exactly you understand stretch the armpits and this whole line sometimes the stretches that uh, you were taught this one right may not work for you because you are not at that level where this one can even extend. Then you have to use body weight. And on times when you have a shoulder that's hurting already, you still need to stretch it. Now, assist it to go up at to that level and then put your, apply your body weight slowly. Anything that is rushed, you cannot feel it properly and you might injure yourself. But if you do it slowly, then your body will release. Anybody uh, ever tell you that there's two types of uh, flexibility? The major thing that always get, uh, get, uh, get forgotten is that there is psychological flexibility, there's physical flexibility. What happens is uh, when you panic, your body tighten up. And when it tightens up, it's not flexible. Not because you are not physically flexible. Not because you don't have that ability to be flexible. But you panic. And this is the reason why that neural, which is the fourth one, is so important. Because all the other uh, thing, classes, fall prevention or whatever, right, balancing, is under optimal condition. You're never challenged to basically something abrupt. And therefore, you panic. So everything that you ever developed is what? Out the window. So you are back to a crystal glass just because your brain cannot react to it. Right? So it's very important to understand. Now, let's uh, work on uh, strength, OK? Enough about stretch, uh, stretching. We might go into some specific ones. So the thing is that strength, there's four areas where we can strengthen. And spinach is not one of those. <laughs> some of you uh, are too young to know what, <laughs> what the spinach is. Popeye? <laughs> right? <laughs> The first one is the big muscles that everybody knows. And that's what all the exercise class work on, the big muscles. The little muscles hardly ever come into play. It's almost like school projects that you used to do or at work, okay? You have a team of five. How many times is one or two person doing all the work, the three of them just basically uh, wait for you to finish it. And that basically is always the problem. The bigger ones, more capable ones, do all the work. The little guys never basically get a chance to exercise or to test their strength, right? So we have to find a way to work the little muscles, right? So big muscles, little muscles. Now, the third thing is mechanics. OK? I'm trying to figure out who to pick on. <laughs> Please? <laughs> OK, <laughs> sure. <laughs> now, the thing is that without telling her what I'm going to do, OK, I suddenly put my body whole weight on there. But guess what? 
It's not a problem. Because why? She has this structural support. And so knowing, understanding your structure is very important. Can she do it with uh, biceps? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Same person, right? One that you can carry it, right? The other one, you can't do anything. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You like a, uh, look like a big guy. <laughs> okay? So again, I want him to push out like this, okay? So uh, bend your elbow, bend your elbow. Nope, no, bend all the way. I'm going to use one finger. Now push. Start. <laughs> I didn't start yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that basically what happened is that mechanically acute angles is weak. Folded arms is acute angle. Okay? When you basically see people trying to do push, uh, push up, what happens? They just do a couple of inches. Why? Because they can't go deep. Deep is what? Acute angles. So I'm trying to just basically explain the mechanical side of things. Do you understand? So you say, hey, okay, I remember that. You have to apply it to everything. So we are going to basically work on something which is said to be a problem. How many of you basically, when it is a big step like this, what happens is that you start leaning in, right? When you lean in, do you see this is the first acute angle? This is the second acute angle. And you are loading up on your knee. How many of you have knee issues every now and then? Quite a few of you. So what I want you to do is to use your calf muscles. Do you see, this is my calf muscles. When I raise it here, what am I doing? I'm reducing how high it is by basically cheating with the other leg. So I don't count on just the front leg. Usually what happens is that this leg has to go at a disadvantage mechanical angle to load up your whole body. This one is that this is 90 degree, this is 90 degree. So as soon as this one reaches the peak, I just go up. So rather than doing it uh, at this uh, try to narrow, I want you guys to actually try to feel there is a difference. So come around here. Try to see the difference between basically putting one foot on there, leaning in, and then go up, and go up. Do you feel it on this leg? Yeah. Right? So now, instead of leaning in, I want your bottom leg to bounce a few times, activate the calf muscles, right? So when it reaches the peak, this one take over. One, and, and go up when you're ready, yes. Do you find it lighter? Yes. Less pressure on the knee. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. These things make a huge difference. And then when uh, we go down the, step, uh, the steps, okay, what do we do? We basically uh, go into here, and then you see we reach down carefully. Do you see this acute angle, acute angle? What you should be doing is actually pushing with the inside leg and push yourself backward. Now I have 90 degree, 90 degree. The angle make a huge difference. So keep yourself upright. So bounce with your bottom leg, exactly. And then when it goes, uh, and then one, don't uh, just basically when this goes to the uh, maximum height, this take over. So one, two, bounce, bounce it, bounce it, exactly. Do you feel the difference? Yes. <laughs> right? Now, to come down, I want you to face here, 
go sideways, but this step pushes yourself to this over here. Okay, so push yourself back, step, exactly. Now do you feel that it's getting down easily? Yeah, definitely. So you're falling yeah, so try lean forward. Yeah. If you lean forward, do you feel that the load on your knee is quite a bit? Yes. Right, so don't lean. Upright, now bounce with the bottom leg. Get used to pushing with your calf. And then now, and push. Yeah, you made it up. So now, yep. And then now, you're using this leg to push hard so that basically this one lands on the uh, mat down there. So push. Uh, do I do both? No, you, uh, you push while you're stepping down. Oh. So push backward. Don't stay there, nope. Oh, no? Nope. <laughs> you see, she is actually going down this way. Means that this knee has to push forward. And this looks like uh, there was a knee operation before, right? <laughs> and so the thing is that don't basically spend it on things that you can optimize and avoid. So keep this upright, so don't push forward, don't push your knee forward, push yourself, whole body, backward. Yes, do you feel the difference? Yeah, but I still feel balanced. <laughs> Use your calf, raise yourself up, and then when this go to the max, just take over with this leg. Yes, you did it, <laughs> right? And then do not push this forward, P take a big step back. Yes, you understand? Mm -hmm. So don't lean forward, allow yourself to travel. Okay, good job. So now, you understand what I meant by changing mechanically how you do things. Means that you kind of get functionally stronger. When I have not physically changed any of you. Just knowing how to use your body. And that's why it is a science. It is basically things that is given to us. But guess what? We don't know how to use it, <laughs> right? There's no user manual, right? And what is worse? There's no returns, <laughs> right? So this is just getting up uh, the steps, right? There's a lot of things, but what is the most important is the falling uh, preparation. So you start to see you need the strong thigh muscles. Now, how do we train that, okay? There's our method versus everybody else. You have seen enough exercise or uh, even participate in some of those uh, cardio. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. We have done that, right? <laughs> when we were young. It is, I don't care if you're young, but for our age, to do those bouncing things, stressing on your joint unproductively is stupid. Okay, let's call it spade a spade. Because the thing is that the uh, cartilages get grinded out and it does not rebuild. So what you want is something really static, no bouncing, and yet you exercise the muscle. So, this is going to be easy. What you're going to do is to try for one minute, only one minute, to just rock yourself off the chair and then back first. This is not the one minute, this doesn't count. So just rock yourself forward and then back. Rock yourself forward and back. Yes, good, open wide. Open the legs wide, exactly, yes. This is easy, right? Okay. Now I want you to rock forward and stay there, arms around your chest. And then I can tell you a story, so stay there. <laughs> Once upon a time, <laughs> there were 25 people. <laughs> Coming into a class. <laughs> Do not rest your elbow on your knee. <laughs> yeah. No, not sitting down. No. We say one minute. Okay. And then I open up my phone. <laughs> Just kidding. Ha! 
How many of you are starting to shake? You feel the, like uh, the muscles start to shake? Yes. That is actually when the big muscles get tired. And now it's the little guy's turn to pitch in. So to work basically the little muscles, you to have to hang until it shakes, right? And then it will burn, <laughs> right? And then now that's when the exercise really start. And do it for eight counts. So my eight counts does not start from the start because every one of us are different. But once you start shaking, then we are on even play. Okay, and then you hold for eight counts when it's shaking, when it's burning. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three. <laughs> Do you feel that this is uh, quite a workout? Yeah. Did you run? No, you didn't run. <laughs> it's just pure, basically uh, thigh muscles. And the thing is that you are working on the finer fibers of your leg muscles. You are not working the strongest ones. The strongest one is already strong, right? It always takes over. You are working the little guys. That has not been uh, worked at all. Anybody ever told you that from zero to one, it is a big, big difference, right? From one to two, yes, it's 100%, but it's not infinite better. And so what I'm trying to say is that your little muscles, if it never get worked, this one will pay huge dividends to you because you never work it at all, right? It also addresses one additional thing. As seniors, we start to take things into a routine. I have had years going to work and exactly the same traffic light, exactly the same time, I see the same freaking people. <laughs> because why? We stick to routine, <laughs> exactly. And the thing is that those routines are good. It keep us safe, but guess what? then your defense mechanism is actually starting to lag because you say, hey, as long as I stick to the routine, everything is fine. The world is not perfect, right? So you have to be ready for what? Things unexpected. And therefore, you need reaction time. You need basically that mental ability to push the envelope. And that burning and plus eight counts is the pushing of the envelope. Okay? How many of you still do push-ups? Good. Okay. That's why he can push me, right? <laughs> but let's try and exercise. Okay? We are isolation to do um, exercise these muscles. Okay? Because these muscles are not strong. Throughout your daily life, think. You carry your grocery, right? How often do you push things out? Hardly ever. Just the doors. The doors, but poof, and then it's done, right? <laughs> exactly. And a lot of times, you make sure that it, it has WD-50 on, uh, 40 on there, right? So that it just slides open, right? So the thing is that these muscles are getting weak. I have people that basically have done martial arts, doing punching and stuff like that all their life, but then when they get to their 60s, they start to basically, hey, I can sit back, right? When they're in their 70s, he fall, and these muscles are not strong enough to protect. So what you have to do is to keep these muscles up. Push up, there's more than one version of the push ups. Now, place your elbow all the way touching right. And I'm not going to get him to push all the way out. I'm going to get him to push just one inch. Exactly, but slow. You do not touch the wall again. So slow, slow, very slow, as if you're doing Tai Chi. Nope, slow, just one inch. 
out one inch, out one inch, slow, slow down one inch, slow out one inch. Do you start to feel it? Do you feel that this one works these muscles a lot more? Yes. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. So, look, uh, okay? So, no, no, not, not yet. So now, you see where the hands are, okay? So I want this to go down by one inch. Go down, exactly. Yeah, now try the same thing. Now, do you feel <laughs> much harder? So I can basically create exercise uh, for you by varying just a tiny little detail. Do you feel it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So these are what I call isolation exercises. These are not functional exercises because why? It doesn't involve basically a reflex or balancing or anything that uh, involves the reflex ad adjustment. This one you just concentrate and push, right? So I want you guys to try this one to isolate it to just the triceps, okay? Too high, it's higher than the... Uh, I feel it. <laughs> you feel it already, <laughs> exactly. Now, do you feel it? Yes. Don't allow your belly button uh, to go forward. So keep your body straight. So just like this. Yeah, and now get it to almost touch. Yeah. Yeah, so get it uh, uh, close. And now one inch out, and then slow in. S slow out. Do you feel it? <laughs> get it closer. Slow down. Slow. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel it? Right? Show me. <laughs> Too tired? <laughs> Press this out. Yeah, just one inch. And then down. The elbow. The elbow one inch. So one inch. Yeah, slow. <laughs> Doesn't look like much. I see what you mean. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, right? Do you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> see, I'm sharing. <laughs> Do you feel that? Just one inch. It's really hurting my eyes. Yeah. Right. Feel it? Yep. Okay. When you fall, this these muscles has to be there. I have an awesome deal for you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> Plane to Hawaii. Half price. But the only thing is that there's a tiny little clause to say there's a little bit of problem with our landing gears. Are you going to take it? Landing gears is very, very important. This is training your landing gears when you fall. So now, the next thing is that, you see, so you see, when I move his hand from here to here, oh, yeah, just relax, yeah, you see, there's give. But when you panic, it freezes. So when this freezes, you are pushing against the ground. Who is going to win? The ground. So you have to learn the gift. So now how do we uh, learn the gift? NBA basketball players, none of them land on flat foot. Because the shock all the way from the heel all vibrate through your whole body system, you will not last for one week. Knee, everything. So what do they do? They land on the ball of their foot, and then he'll go down, and then they bend their knee. So one. So I can jump up, you hear the impact. There's a huge difference. And that's the gift, right? So the thing is that we all have cell phones and then guess what? This thing is tiny. They are the shell, 
but is this enough to what? Most of the, uh, most of the time, it won't allow your phone to crack. So what you want to do is to basically add protection. So this here is the thing. I'm going to do it against the ground, or you're going to do it against the wall. So the wall is the simulation of the ground. So you are going to land on the fingertip, and then finger, palm, and then bend the elbow a little bit, and then push back. So if you're strong enough to do this, you can do it against the ground. So you're learning what? The sequencing. The sequencing allowed that absorption. The problem with uh, the regular exercise programs that do the bench presses is that you're pushing against the weight. So you are used to what? When you panic, you push out. Which means what? You're almost like a car crashing into a truck. Both go at the same speed, right? If one can give, the damage will be a lot less. It may not be zero. It depends uh, on the situation, right? So the thing is that you have to learn to absorb. So if you are going to, to do it against the wall, this is what you're going to do. You are going to go a little bit away from the wall, slightly tilt yourself so that fingertip touch first, and then finger, palm, bend the elbow a little bit. And again, we learn about the acute angle. So don't allow this folding. This should be a minimum of 90 degree or more. Make sense? We already know acute angles are bad. So is this a good idea? No, you're going to do a face plant, right? So keep the 90 degree, absorb it a little bit, make sure you sequence your hand. Sequencing your hand is not something default you will do. You have to practice it. Go find the wall. Finger, palm, bend a little bit. You understand? And do not allow the groin to sink. So you have to tighten up your tummy muscles, mm. right? Otherwise, this is going to hit the ground, right? Mm. Exactly, yes. Good. And fingertip, finger, palm, and exactly. You understand? Exactly. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't bend too, too much because if it goes to acute, you are weak, right? So fingertip, finger, palm, exactly. Good. Okay. Everybody, stop for a sec. Now that you understand what you need to do, okay, that's good. How many of you walk around the mall like this? <laughs> then is it realistic what you just did? Put your hands here and then tilt fingertip finger. <laughs> That's a lot better, right? <laughs> exactly. And see, when you do this, it, this is tight. So you have to learn that sequencing. Fingertip, nope, fingertip, finger, palm and then elbow, okay? So start from here, hands here, and then tilt, you're falling, right? Nope, that's palm uh, touching right in the first instance. First? You have right. to touch fingertip first, finger, palm. Okay. Okay? Fingertip, finger, palm, exactly, much better. So that abs helped yeah, the absorption. It does, it does absorb, yeah. Right? You didn't, you go fingertip and then palm. Fingertip, finger, the whole finger, and then palm. Oh, okay. Finger, no, oh, fingertip first. Fingertip, finger, 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 finger. Okay. Palm still up, right? Yeah. And then palm. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, first. exactly. Fingertip, exactly, okay? Remember, fingertip, finger, palm. So be strong here. So when you land, you land with the, uh, with the elbows out here, and then you bend it a little bit, exactly, yes. Like this. This is uh, at the max you want to bend. Oh, I can't remember everything like when I fall. I just, yeah. fall. I just fall. That's why you practice, right? Falling. That's why it's a simulation, so that you train your brain, so that this becomes the default action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Okay. So start from here, yeah. and then you fall, boom. Fingertip, hey, fingertip, <laughs> exactly, right. <laughs> okay? okay, takes practice. 
Life is simple if things stop there. You guys, uh, every now and then, you just, oh, <laughs> lots of time. One. <laughs> Practice it over time. Because the, because the brain needs that st the stimulation. Without the stimulation, you are not going to react to it. Right? <laughs> so, this covers the forward, right? Now, the thing is that we have to handle backward. When we go backward, two things that is often at risk. Tailbone. Next thing is the head, or the head and the tailbone. The two are almost equal. If you land on your tailbone, most of us, the bones on the spine is not basically good enough to handle an impact, and it will fracture. How many of you, there was one person that uh, says, uh, like, uh, she fought and then she has a fractured, uh, fractured spine. Was it you? Yeah. The thing is that it is very real, right? And the thing is that if you stick your butt back, this will impact, and then, so watch. One, do you see my tailbone actually pointing perpendicular to the ground? Right? One. See, that's a default. What you have to do is to make sure that you are doing this. You're pushing the butt forward. Because then when you push this forward, do you see my tailbone is actually pointing over there? And then you feel your butt, your butt is actually lower than your tailbone, so it protects, provides protection to your tailbone. So we are not going to address that because that one takes a lot more uh, simulation. We, but we are going to practice the head because that is the first thing. How many of you have seen like war, the veterans, right? Amputated hands, I can have an artificial one. Limbs, yeah, I can change, even change my heart. How many of you figured that you can change your head? <laughs> yeah, only in the movies, right? The thing is that that is why that is the first thing that uh, the paramedics also check. When they come, uh, call 911, they come to uh, your house, the first thing that you hit uh, your head against uh, anything, right? And so far, we are still lucky, like uh, most of the participants uh, uh, that has uh, come to uh, my classes, like uh, always remember this. So we are going to do this. We're going to sit out in the chair. And so what we're going to do is to lean back. But as soon as we lean back, my nose point to my belly button. Do you see, then my head is protected, right? So one, and then two. Yep, good. And then again, one, tall, boom. And then now, this is getting too easy, right? So when I say pop, you do this, poof, as if you roll back. And what do you have to remember? Head position. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See? Intellectually knowing something is quite different than basically the body knowing, right? So it's tall, pop. Tall, pop. Exactly. Tall. Oh, that one you forgot your head. <laughs> pop. Yeah, good. Pop. Ah, I forgot your head. <laughs> pop. <laughs> no reaction. Pop. <laughs> what is this shoulder shrug? <laughs> Pop. Exactly. Pop. Pop. <laughs> Pop. Ah, uh, the head. You have to tuck oh, yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Usually, okay, during class, one of the uh, ways to remember this tuck is to say, give me a $100 bill. Put it here. 
<laughs> if it falls down, it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> then every <laughs> Okay? So it is very important that you tuck your head because then your head will not touch the ground. Okay? And this also basically uh, teach you how to round your body. Okay? So pop. <laughs> yeah, no laughing matter. Yes, uh, exactly. But uh, you see, you need that preparation time. Right? So that is where family members and other things, uh, you tell them to say, hey, randomly, pop. <laughs> right? The thing is that you have, because why? Do you receive an email from me first to say, hey, you're about to fall? <laughs> no. Right? When it happens. <laughs> See? <laughs> right? Thing is that you have to basically get the neural to be ready for all those things. Because otherwise, everything is just talk. Right? So you can see like the exercises that we are doing, one of the important components is that simulation of the falling. Okay? And during the class, at one point when people are ready, I actually have them, uh, people push from behind so that they actually uh, try to rebalance. Right? And that is important because you, you need that brain. Right? So I check the time first. So rather than Q&A, I'm going to talk for four more minutes, <laughs> okay? So one of the things is that basically it is all, you are always trying to rebalance something. So for example, in here, if I put my finger here, it would drop, right? So to balance it out, it has to be even, both sides, right? So when you fall forward, what do you have to do? Put your butt back. So everybody, stand up. So think that, Yanka, come on, hold, hold your uh, t-shirt or whatever. Yank yourself forward. Now you are about to fall. What do you do? Push your butt back. And some of you are actually just bending forward. So watch. Give me a finger. I don't mean that. <laughs> so one, this is where my hip position is. This is bending forward. See, see, I didn't travel. This is pushing the butt back. So you have to push the butt back. To the extent where basically if I have a wall behind me, about 12 inches away, push, I can touch it. Some of you are too afraid to push it back, but that's your rebalance. Your knee has to bend. Your knee can bend, yeah, because why? We're not doing stretching. Right? So this is the functional side of things, exactly. Right? So think, one, tilt, you're almost on your toe, right? And then a rebalance. Right? So one, two. Do you, exactly, do you feel it? Yeah. Good. And now the other exercise that you should bring home is balance on toe. So everybody, let's do it easy. So just go up onto your toes and stay up there. <laughs> Why are you stepping? <laughs> stay in one spot. Guess what? We're not used to using our toes. That's the problem. So what I want you to do is to balance on the ball of your foot. So this is the ball of the foot. When you fall forward, <laughs> when you fall forward, I want your toes to press hard into the ground. Okay? And when you fall backward, just lower your heel a wee bit. Do you feel that? You stabilize a lot with just that technique. Toes. And therefore, you have to work the foot and toe muscles. Right? Otherwise, they are not ready. And for someone, like, uh, uh, like I, learned, I learned that through my dad or seeing how my dad uh, like that whole evolution, is that uh, he had a fall, and so, so he started using a walking cane, right? And then guess what? You start leaning forward because there's a cane there. Once you get into that habit, it gets into the no recovery stage. 
because what happened is that this, you're always off balance. Leaning exactly, leaning forward. And what is worse is that your back is going to be in pain. Because if you, I have a stick, okay, heavy on one side, you're holding the, uh, when it is uh, just on top, it's not a problem. But when you start to tilt it, you start to feel the, stre uh, the stress on your uh, wrist. And in the human body, that's the head, this is your lower back. So you have to bring your chin back to your own spine, get back to the warm up, squeeze the shoulder blade, correct your posture, right? All those things will help you. Okay, time's uh, in the last minute. <laughs> So the thing is that the classes can always help you because what happened is that the corrections, we can basically, because it's a smaller class, we can actually do more personalized uh, corrections. And then there's a lot of topics, and so you can see in the list uh, of uh, initially what I want to cover, and then we're just basically scraping the top of it. The thing is that uh, there's a lot to learn. Thank you, everyone.